Yo, yo, yo. This is Ori here with Miriam and Zach. Take Good it Good to away. be here. Yes. Good to be with you guys. We also have Alan on, on audio. What's up, everyone? And we are hanging out being visionary and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> stuff. So much stuff. Okay. What do you say to that, Zach? Let's do it. Alan? Yeah. Beautiful. Co-creating something real. Yes. So... Um, <laughs> what if our pace has is starting out slow? Literally right now? Yeah. Well, that would be a change of pace because usually things are pretty quick or rushed. Is it bad to have a slow pace? It's not what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm not used to that either. Unless I force myself I to think meditate. I think movies go too slow. <gasps> I think that movies should go at the speed of Twitter for me to stay engaged. Is that why you fall asleep? Yeah, I usually just like fast forward to a movie. Really? Uh, yeah, don't even watch it. Just like see. <laughs> just, it's, just an, it's just a series of slides, and then I'm like, got it. How about details? I'm very detail oriented, so I like to like put the captions on. I so. know, I know you're really detailed. You like <laughs> this is getting cinematic. You read half as fast as I do. If you're conscious, purposely, and also because my eyesight oh, is okay. is compromised. I skip every other word. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was taught speed reading, but but um, I really want to take in the details. Yeah, my friend Will was like, how are you able to speed read? And I'm just like, oh, I just toss comprehension out the window. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I have no idea what I read. I just <sighs> scanning for keywords. I wish I could just touch a book and just have it like by osmosis. <laughs> like in your brain, right? I wish yeah. I would do that all day long, right. just absorb it's, knowledge. D you, it'll happen one day. You'll just have to you know, put in a neuro chip, like a neuro lace, into your brain. Yeah. and Is I've, that something you're willing to do in order to I, speed I, read and comprehend fast? I believe I even said it in the segment with Alan that if I could, I would put a chip. I just wouldn't lose. Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> I thought I was like facilitating. <laughs> Sorry, we just ran with it. Go yeah. ahead. You feel, feel free to interject. Coming out swinging, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, spiritual MMA. <laughs> um, so, well, but then again, I might just make stuff all slow. We can take a step and, and take a breather and, and, and between us three create a resonance where you move a little faster and we move a little slower. I'm down for that. Okay, let's see how we do. Okay. Are you down? Sure. All right. Woohoo! What about you, Alan? Super down. All right, cool. Do you have a question? So you're the leader now? Am I? <laughs> I mean, you have that dynamic Shakti. Dynamic Shakti. 
You know what I'm saying? Well, let's give us a topic. All right. What um, you're interested in or for us to explore in this gangsta session. Okay. <laughs> Is it worth living? Period. With devotion. Would you like to go ahead, Zach? Devotion is attachment to purpose. And attachment is the link to all suffering. Is that what you told me? <laughs> what I told you. You told me, so... Um, I think that's a universal law. I don't think it comes from me well, practicing non-attachment. Well, if you're devoted, that's a spiritual attachment. And isn't the attachment the cause of all suffering? Yeah. So, yeah, but if you just free yourself before being devotional, before flowering that facet, then what about the people? Meaning we should have a devotion for a greater good that extends beyond us? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I would agree. We definitely have devotion and purpose, which I now know is the word ikagi in Japanese. Great. So what do you say to that? What do I see it at? What do you what? say to that? Well, Zach yeah. is devoted. I'm devoted, yeah. And I'm fucking miserable. Okay? Are we streaming live? Yeah, you, you, you can gonna... swear all you want. Okay, good. <laughs> we went over those ground rules in the first episodes. <laughs> Dude, my devotion has been the source of, like, all of my angst. Like, it's caused me to lose friends and lose family. In but, a sp specific context? But the return on investment has been higher consciousness and a higher vibrational energy that resonates with the prime creator. Someone once said, devotion is the sweetest way to be. Is that a bee pun? No. We were talking about bees earlier. And they are devoted to the greater good and to the hive and to being selfless? Yeah. How do you cultivate devotion? The question itself was devotional. There you go. Okay. Um, how do you cultivate devotion? Is it innate? Is it something you can do in every facet of your life? Like if I'm dressing, I'm devoted to the act? Like, or, or a greater, a greater so, purpose? I guess... From one perspective, devotion is like involvedness, right? Whatever you're involved in, you're devoting yourself to it. And so perhaps there are levels of devotions and there are uh, higher and lower expressions of devotion. Absolutely, sure. And if you so. You have all the skin in the game or you're half assed. Are you willing? Are you willing to. I guess, um, proverbially die for your purpose. Like obviously, let's say someone like Zach, you know, taking, having courage and consciousness to leave a sweet, convenient life of free massages and everything. So he's courageous. Absolutely. That's my favorite. Your favorite emotion? That's it. I mean, like devotion it. and courage are like my favorite. Who would you say embodies for you both? Martin Luther King. Okay. Who ended up dying for what he believes in. Yeah. And then there's like, you know, like Jesus Christ and like, there's all these figures that everyone always names. But man, those facets. Now we're in... 2019 and smaller things than those stories happen right even just hanging out with some quote-unquote friends but then you have these collective energies of separation and 
hatred and survival and fear that arise in virtually most social settings. And so there's still an arena for us to be these heroes, these embodiments of truth, these courageous devotional beings anywhere. Although I don't think that if, you're, if you are devotional, you're doing it to be a hero. Hopefully you're not doing it for the fame or else ego creeps in. You're just, it's your purpose and you're motivated by that and you have no kind of choice in a sense. Like mm. let's say, again, let's say taking Zach as an example, like it was probably, I'm not going to speak for you, but eating you alive to continue to live a lie carrying the truth yeah I had to do it and if I didn't uh, the bad feels would continue <laughs> don't want those bad feels I don't want those yo. bad feels that's <laughs> simple as I can put it I think in my case almost dying losing my life and wanting to be of service and do something that's bigger than me mm. um, something to give back I mean and for some people that's having a child or a family every, you know everybody's different because obviously being a parent is a big sacrifice yes for sure but it's individual to find your purpose or your own devotion you could mm -hmm. be devoted to making the you know baddest the badass like meal for the night or something everything can yes. be an act a devotional act yes which also takes presence which is difficult in our day and age. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. What are you devoted to, Ori? Um, I'm devoted to... Um... I'm devoted to um, I'm devoted to flowering. Yeah. As a human being, you mean flowering your your spirit, your essence? as a human being and as a species. Yeah, flowering, like you know what I'm saying. Do you think that as a society we are flowering right now? It's funny because my society is <laughs> so. It feels like. I love how you talked about this, um, that small, smallening the scale of devotion, like when you cook or what, like, even like when you pick up the water from your bedside or like when you like tap someone, like you can just make it smaller and smaller, but that's still, um, you're still creating your reality. And I do feel that in my experience over time that my, re my whole reality, the whole world is sweeter and you could say it's because i don't happen to come across this news story or this tournament <laughs> but that's my experience well that brings up that there is a sense of maybe if i personally if i wasn't a journalist maybe i wouldn't be well i don't watch tv or read mainstream garbage bs news but there is a sense of like, if you go off to the jungle and you're just connecting with nature and you're going within and not partaking in the matrix, mm -hmm. there's, there's some joy in that. Yeah. But then there's also wanting to be part of this revolution that's happening and be on the forefront. Which the front mm -hmm. of the wave of the phase transition as we go from point A and now we're going to point B. Yeah, and it's happening now. There's it's a happening. there's a big awakening, a quickening, 
that's happening, wanting to be part of a community of other truth seekers. Mm-hmm. And that's Beautiful. devotional. Beautiful. Be beautiful. The next world. It's a brave new world. A higher density of light in the dreamscape. If there is such a thing. I believe there's a dreamscape. Say more. (laughs) (laughs) Onward. Um, Magic. You can... You can manifest magic, you can manifest your dreams, and part of that is believing and focusing your energy into positivity. Um, And saying that after kind of being taken down a rabbit hole of negativity, watching what's happening. What do you guys want to ask me now? Ask you. What can we ask you? What did you eat for breakfast, Dory? <laughs> um, not the healthiest thing. Well, you're with a food Nazi, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can say the word Nazi in these days. I language. had. Um, <gasps> I his, was. His challenge just got canceled. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> the, the tech. Nazis are very sensitive about. <laughs> All right, just for that, you're sharing your breakfast first. <laughs> yeah. What did we have? Uh, it was a smorgasbord of uh, nuts, <laughs> and we also had I had a, a, some slices of organic turkey, um, blueberries. and then I had blueberries, <laughs> and then macadamia nuts. So yeah, the Beautiful. Macadamia nuts the macadamia nuts and then some water I had some water and then when I go back home I'm going to make myself a smoothie with a bunch of fresh arugula that I've frozen with uh, some other frozen fruit <laughs> I'm going to down that this guy ain't playing around mm-hmm. cured, um, cured all my problems by diet nice yeah food is thy medicine mm-hmm. for nice I'd like to say this started with bulletproof coffee that was a little bit too strong and uh, didn't have enough butter in it. Finished my butter. I put butter and collagen in my bulletproof coffee. Now it's your Great. turn. What did you eat? Well, those, those Rice Krispies? Those Special K? Uh, it's not well, as special as you think. <laughs> All right, look. I <laughs> may have had. I may have had. Safeway Deli chicken wings of four varieties. Wow. And some chocolate malt balls. But <laughs> <laughs> but it was after like a 27 hour fast. Interesting. Well, that's one way to break your fast. <laughs> 27 hours straight to the malt balls and please. the chicken. Four varieties. I'm not going to lie to you. No, please don't. What does it mean, four variety? Well, they had buffalo, barbecue, teriyaki, and fried chicken wings. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you eat that? <laughs> with eat malt balls. With malt balls. <laughs> not moth balls. Not to be confused with malt, malt balls. Did you did you down it with like a giant glass of milk? No. Okay. I uh, just water. Okay. Uh-huh. Together or did was there some? Did you digest the chicken wings and then have the malt balls? Well, why do you care? What do you mean? That's the question that I chose to ask as a food Nazi and, and um, functional medicine consultant. Well, what if my real sustenance, yes, the thing that beats my heart <laughs> it's the malt and milk. sustains my physiology well, is processed food with all the nutrients removed? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. What? Um, it's uh, spirituality. Okay, but you're diverting from the malt balls and the chicken wings. Yeah. Why? First of all, why did you have a 27-hour fast and break it with crap food? What is this, an interrogation? <laughs> <laughs> well... We're, we're materialists. And spirituality is built on a foundation of... Uh, Healthy eating. Yeah. 
Well, I think you might be um, more of a Gnostic with the spiritual world coming first and the material world coming second. It wasn't always this way. But that, I would say that is the case. So, but why did you have the fast? Was it... Um, well... Um, to tell you the truth, I Please. have, uh, unless my environment is like really, really supportive, which hopefully it's moving there. Yeah. I have trouble uh, with most foods, you know, it's just like this dense world and you have this gut with like all these parts and uh, my first couple, two decades weren't perfectly um, you know, supported. And so, and so these days, sometimes I'll like fasting feels more. Fasting is great. It's good for your system. If, yeah, it's good for your system. And, but I fasted for, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, Alan was like, or you need to be fasting. Like, I'm al always fasting and like, uh, and like uh and you could afford to fast probably and so i took it on and i ended up fasting for 127 hours and my previous like I'm just water uh yeah so that's uh so it's really easy once you get into day two doesn't it first day is a little bit hard mm -hmm. yeah yeah especially if you're on carbohydrate um metabolism as opposed yeah. to burning ketones. Right. Yeah. Right. But but then the the mystery is to break the fast and then where the malt did you go to the malt balls? Did you seek them out at like Trader Joe's or something? So to tell you the truth, um, I just went to Safeway. Oh yeah, Safeway. You said that. And. It was like... You were fucking hungry. <laughs> yeah. I was fucking hungry. And I was like in one of those moods where I was like, I'm going to try to just like buy exactly what like my craving is as opposed to like a health uh, paradigm. You know, I was like, I'm going to try to like just like really trust my whatever. Can and I so, say that to say something to that? Yeah. Th that there is the... I guess mindset of like oh trust your cravings but that in a lot of cases the cravings you're being controlled by like an addiction to sugar mm. and that is arguably an epidemic of sugar addiction yeah like your cells are screaming because their glycogen levels are low and so they're like please give me some sugar so I can build up my glycogen stores and uh, you basically got to make uh, your cells your bitch. Just, no. Right? Have self-regulation. Come back on fat and protein. <laughs> and lots and lots of leafy vegetables. Yeah, actually moderate protein, lots of fat. But it, it is a habit. A habit that, and it's an addiction. I mean, just yesterday at the grocery store just like why are you putting sugar in in smoked salmon right why, why are you putting sugar in the bacon yeah because it's i think a programmable matter that yeah. dumbs people down and makes them suggestible huh. like and before i before i did my thing where i disclosed google mm -hmm. i had to um purify myself and so um i had to changed my diet uh, and I went to a really hardcore diet um, and I started abstain abstaining from all the vices that I had because in order to have like a clear mind I needed to have a clear body mm -hmm. it's almost if one is built on top of it's the your other. temple yeah it's the temple yeah the, the, the temple of <laughs> I'm not gonna say it you know what I'm gonna say because we're telepathic like that <laughs> <laughs> But it's true, Ori. F 
food is thy medicine or food is thy foe so that's why i asked that question because i'm you all you know about what's interesting food. tell me i literally feel yes more conscious of my chubby cheeks okay now than five minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> Well, I showed you. We're not I, talking about your chubby cheeks. No. We're talking about breaking a fast with malt balls and what was it? Cereal? Chicken wings. Chicken wings. <laughs> Four different chicken varieties chicken of chicken, wing. chicken wings. And I showed you my. Sorry, I showed you my before and after. Do you picture. think that hierarchies play a role in our metabolic processes? Well, how are you defining hierarchies? Hierarchies like what the queen of does the queen of England have an impact on my metabolic process? Queen hypothalamus. What, what queen <laughs> is Englanding? <laughs> what queen is Englanding? What do you mean by that question? You need to. It's a little bit of a riddle. Can you decipher? Well, unless you understand the question. Queen is England. No, I can't. It's <laughs> an unexpected <laughs> conjugation. <laughs> <gasps> Explain, Ori. Um, what if... I, okay, sorry, I have an answer. Yes. From the point of view of epigenetics, if you're talking about the hierarchies or the environment that are controlling the world and causing this Good. stress, then it does have an impact on our metabolic processes because epigen yes. epigenetics is how our environment can have an impact on our genetic expressions and we are not victims to our genes it's good to know these polymorphisms that stand in the way but you're not a victim to them yes so it's time to get rid of the queen no <gasps> she's almost there great i'm not wishing death to the queen just want to make that clear but I'm not and so this piece. speaks to another interesting topic. Well, how are you? Yeah, What's let's going see on for you? Okay, so <laughs> imagine, close your eyes. Imagine you're at the bottom of a temple. Uh oh. You look up and you see a thousand white stairs. And for hours you are climbing up these stairs. And you start to see a figure at the top of these stairs. And as you climb these stairs to the top, you realize that it's a wise Chinese man sitting cross-legged with a really long beard. And as you get closer, you realize that the beard is red <laughs> because he's eating Cheetos, waiting for your Which was, we learned was pig food. What? Originally. Cheetos was pig food? Yeah. Thanos said that Cheetos was originally pig food. Which I believe. Huh. And why wouldn't the beard be orange? Because he's Cheetos, got Cheetos. Like, in but his Cheetos beard, right? is orange. Right? It's orange. Orange. Isn't that what his beard is? It's the color <laughs> orange. Orange. <laughs> you said That red. was literally what I was thinking. Like, what if I came and, like, like he was, like, eating Cheetos with, like, chopsticks, right? <laughs> yeah. But that's a valid way to eat Cheetos. Hey, I'll use chopsticks on anything. I like eating ch with chopsticks or my hands. I'll, so gi I'll give you some <laughs> with chopsticks. <laughs> okay, let's see what okay. you got. Dumplings. <laughs> no, I won't eat dumplings. Guys, do you think that we could be even more? Yes. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Are we the next Joe Rogan experience? Maybe Joe Slogan. <laughs> <laughs> that was rude. That was rude. That's why I love this girl so She rude. actually loves my jokes, right? <laughs> Other people just defriend me, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is good. Joe's Joe slogan. This is good. What's the next question? Because I can ask questions all day long as a journalist. Well, who's the sage here? 
who is the sage? There's different versions of sageness, right? Right. It's not a competition. No. I just love that word. Yes, sage is a good word. So, I'll go first. Okay. Anything in the universe, what would you like to know? If I'm asking you, Sage Uri? Yeah. Ori. Ori, sorry. I apologize. Like Oreo. Ori. There you go. I don't know that I want to ask anything. Why did they call them apartments? Who am I to call? Who am <laughs> I together. to call myself a sage? <laughs> blasphemous. Oh yeah. It's blasphemous I, to call oneself a sage. It's yeah. arrogant and egotistical. It's mental health issue and deluded and arrogant. If you know what I know that I have wisdom, <laughs> is that why I love it? Why is that arrogant? That's not arrogant. <clears throat> I'm owning it. Yeah. Are you tall? Mm hmm. How dare you say that? See, no. It's, it's that's totally fine, right? You're tall. You're a sage. If you speak it, then you start to manifest it. Especially if you know that you're not saying it because of ego. Mm. You can make that decision. Ego is the worst. Well, there's, there's, I think it's, there's healthy ego. I mean, we need ego. Yeah. Then there's the id. Yeah, it's just as long as the ego is kept in check. Uh oh. oh. Check, check, well, check. Don't, well, don't, don't forget that um, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot to slip that one in and let's talk about that for a second who believes and there are people who believe that he killed himself with paper sheets and it's just coincidental that it must have been like double ply at least at least at least double ply and that the cameras didn't work they just weren't on and there was no reason to kill him and kill all the secrets I just secrets. saw you doing this with your fingers and i make it mean that we're baking bread here yeah okay breaking bread or so or baking bread baking um yeah this means baking, baking bread? bread yeah yeah i didn't know that this means baking bread i thought this means it's all about the money same thing but it's a cha-ching it's a we're doing it. Mm -hmm. This is gangsta hour. Yeah. So. So what, what would you want to know? I pass on that question. I already have enough um, psychic skills. Oren, what do you want? Ori. Ori, what do you want? What do I want? I want the tide of my life Whoa. to continue rising. Like tsunami style? Oh, uh, in all ways. Okay. This is a but, little bit cryptic, but all right. But, um, Sounds beautiful. But. Um, bringing forth something something <sighs> worthwhile I was going to say meaningful are you open to altering your diet? Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. Thank you. So the first thing I 
wanted to create a show called Clean Up Your Life, where I would ransack someone's pantry or fridge or medicine cabinet and just chuck out all the toxic shit. Mm. So I would start... Well, you don't have to say that at me. <laughs> well, I'm in your home, so... <laughs> Like, for instance, the special K would be something I would trash. Yeah. The Bro. K is actually not that special. It's actually mediocre. And it says it on the box. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't be fooled by the word special. By the way, by yeah. the way, uh... <laughs> yes. One thing that arose for me as you shared that was in addition to the pain that's moving through you in processing is how's Alan doing? Fantastic. Any comments? I love the flowering as myself and the species. Love that part. It was so good. If more of us viewed ourselves as flowering that way, that'd be incredible. Okay. I also love devotion and courage. Why did you bring up the word pain? Because I felt Like, you weren't just speaking. It felt like you were moved when you were sharing. Okay, but where does the pain come in? Uh, well, in that particular case, <clears throat> you? Yeah. And there are levels and facets, and so say more. Say more. Okay, I find that it's painful to watch others eat caca food because I know that they can awaken or increase their brain cognitive skills or excel in the way that their body operates. And I also know that the big corporations are poisoning us and so I feel indignant in the sense of like how dare you poison me what are you gonna say is that why it's also um, your potential is being held back right like you are a flowering flower <laughs> and um, but the flower is not at its full potential because instead of water you chose coca-cola to put the flower in right maybe a little viagra in that coca-cola to you know because that actually makes the flower like bloom stronger this is true did you know this no turns out they put viagra in some of the like plant mix yeah. Was it supposed to be a fertilizer? That no, they it, makes, it makes the plant, like, get stiffer. Bloom harder. <laughs> Bloom harder. Yeah. Well, I'm saying that because there's lots of things that were meant for other things and then find their way in the food supply. Like, you know, they use a yoga mat ingredient in bread. Or they put they sneak in a lot of poisons in the food <clears throat> that impacts IQ points and impacts um, again you know clogs up and creates metabolic syndrome which is inflammation which is oxidative stress which is insulin resistance and so you can't reach those higher vibrational levels unless you build it on a foundation of health and that health is foundationed on clean food 
And let's say having devotion, if you know that those chicken wings are actually pumped up with hormones and antibiotics that are harming you. So have a devotion to your body temple. Like think of that animal and all the suffering it had in its life. Not that you're responsible for that suffering, but by eating that animal, you are taking all its suffering in a concentrated form and putting that into your body. But you're, you're not dissing, you're not like a vegan, you're just dissing conventional farming where there's torture. Well, I, I choose food that minimizes suffering. Like if the animal had a good life, free pasture range, you know, chicken, like, you know, eating grain, then you're not taking in concentrated suffering. And stress. And stress, and, right? And, and torture. Yeah, right. I have, a, I have a friend that's a fruitarian. He eats okay. 30 bananas a day. He's wow. In, uh, I call him Mr. Bananas, but I don't think he knows that. Um, and he's, he's invited me to try just eating fruits, which I would if I was in the jungle and there's a different climate, but do not take in that death energy. Yeah, no death energy. Mm. Only eat chicken that's been raised on Prozac. <laughs> yeah. They actually do give um, pets Prozac. That's pretty crazy. To give your cat Prozac. Wow. I, I know a yeah. woman that gave her cat Prozac. And now I just learned that an animal had IBS. Uh-oh. Irritable mm. bowel syndrome? Yeah. Her cat had an IBS. Huh. Related to uh, Prozac? Or just... No. Just related probably to eating shitty pet food. Probably. Wow. That has grains and now is on a grain-free... Can I ask you something? Of course. Did you just use the S word? You just got another strike. What word did I use? <laughs> S-H-I-T. Yeah. I thought that swearing was allowed. Is it offensive to your devotion? Well, I mean... <clears throat> Why do I swear? Yeah. I have a potty mouth. I know she does. <laughs> it's in, she tries to text me, and there's all these words that are like censored, like the phone's censoring it, right? It's a new thing. It's a new thing. They just, it is they a just, new they thing. Just, all, they just take it all out. They're censoring us. In so many ways. Why do I swear? Well... Yeah, why do you swear? It's, it's, uh... Emphasis. You need and to stop. Just stop it. Uh, that sounds like my mama. I hear her voice many times. I'm gonna imitate her. Mary, why do you say the F word? It sounds so vulgar, Mary. Can't you stop? That's my mom wow. saying that. But I would like to take the opportunity to break and unpack the F-U-C-K word. Do you know where the word fuck comes from? Uh, Do you know Alan? Find under carnal knowledge. So the prostitutes, when they became prostitutes, because at one point they were courtesans, and they were healing through sex, uh, they started giving Excuse them... Excuse me giving them fines and putting a stamp f-u-c-k so just to break down there's also a study that shows that people who swear are more intelligent look it up not and on also Google. more trustworthy and also more trustworthy yes this is true and yeah. i do try to curb my swearing but alan said that we could swear so it's like party party on <laughs> well but I respect if someone's offended. I won't say bad words. If, if you're a flower that's blooming, what kind of flower would that be? <laughs> yeah. it's a good question. There's many flowers. Um, if I'm a flower that's blooming, what kind of flower would that be? Yes. <laughs> um, reflexively, as soon as you articulated that, it was like the flower. 
Okay. The flower. And what is the flower? Is there the flower? Is there an emblematic flower of all flowers? I think so. Or at least, uh, yeah. Um. Well, what comes to mind without thinking? Just like, what's the f what's your flower? What do you see in your mind's eye? Um. What, with you guys? No, what's your flower? Just like, don't think about it. What flower do you see? In your mind right now, it's blooming yeah. and opening up. Um. I saw a morning glory. <laughs> I saw a Gerber daisy. Well, when I look at you, I see a light above your head. Okay. You don't want to answer so, the question. What kind of, do you see auras? Huh? You see his aura? I don't. I also see a light close to your head. Um, so, the Okay, or I don't want, you don't want to answer the question. So that's like chanting. Deathless flower, the indestructible, eternal, expressive flower. That has no name? The nameless flower. The great sp spirit. Have you heard of the book, Flowers in the Attic? Have you heard of that book? No. Have you, Alan? No, but I love your answer. Deathless, eternal, indestructible flower. <laughs> I have not. <clears throat> it's a classic book that I grew up in my... Because I'm much older than you. Huh. It's true. Um, and it's about... A brother and sister that are there's a whole series and they are locked up in the attic and they are the flowers that somehow manage not to wither but do form an incestuous relationship incestuous <laughs> <laughs> it's true yeah. it's a classic book sounds um, more like a deflower <laughs> there was a deflowering an incestuous one but hey they were stuck in the attic. Maybe there was more than two. Maybe they had siblings. Anyway, the series goes all through until they're freed from the attic. I guess it's symbolic. Are you serious? I am very serious. Yeah. Um, yep. I was a bookworm. Read a lot of books growing up. I was a nerd. Proud nerd. A chubby nerd. Great. Yeah, it wasn't so great when, you know, called you fatso or tub of lard. What was the worst thing that you were called? Tub of lard. It's pretty, pretty. Okay, this, the worst thing was five years old, recess, cold. I have a crush on this boy named Peter. And someone brings it, says like, oh, Mary has a crush on Peter. And then he says... But Miriam's so fat, she can roll around the world. <laughs> and obviously, you have to show me a picture because I want to see what this looks like. No, you? I was never super. F I was just chubby. Okay. Um, not fat enough to roll around the world, but I guess fat enough to not have Peter as She's much. She's got her own <laughs> gravitational pull. 
Uh, yeah, I grew up on eating not mothballs, but um, McDonald's and Coca Cola and Doritos and lots of junk food. Damn, damn. And now your treasure from that trauma again. Now I have guns. No, I've had to wear really. Tickets to the gun show. Lots of tickets to the gun show. Um, a lot no of no one's work. taking her Second Amendment rights. <laughs> no, nope. Um, so food, yeah, has a big role, and being picked on as a child stays with you. Obviously, I formed bulimia, like many young women. Why are you pointing at me? Because you're the host. I'm also looking at Zach. Well, can you just own it as your own? I mean, you don't got to wield it. your energies at me. Okay, I didn't know I was wielding my energies. I'll pull back my God. Shakti power. I will not look at you, Rory. <laughs> no, I, I own it. I own my chubbiness. You're not chubby. No, I was. I'm talking about the past. I'm talking the power of food on the mind and the body. Great. 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 So shall we talk about something else? I just really like having you here. Like, I feel more like this sage I want to be with you, like, being dynamic and shining. Thank you. So, I feel, I feel, it makes me feel good. Even though I'm wielding my power at you. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't mean in a... I don't mean... I was just looking at you. Yeah. Making eye contact. Being present. Yes. Should we talk about censorship? Or can we talk about censorship? Um... Or the it's a different vibrational energy. It's so true. Right? What was I thinking? Yeah. So there's no space for censorship in this sacred space we've created. No. Okay. So we're talking about feels right now. Feels. Yeah. What censorship you is um, oppressive and very material. Realm. He's in spiritual. Okay. Channeling powerful Gnostic energy. Yes. Blom blomising, blomising, blossoming, Blom. <laughs> blossoming. <laughs> Flowers that are deathless. Yes. Is there another topic we can explore? Yeah. And rap on since it's gangsta. Um sure. I was gonna say Zach. <laughs> but to rap on? Um Yeah. What do we want to... Yeah, we can do that. Okay. What do we want to create with this video? if we're being intentional. What would you say, Zach? <laughs> I don't know. What do we want to create? Well, I like more personally having a theme to be able to oops, build on 
so that there's a takeaway for the audience. Mm. Okay, how about what does it actually mean to be deathless? In the flesh. Well, I would say one knowing that your eternal spirit that is beyond this body suit. And you can also be deathless in that you can leave a legacy behind, whether that's a, a kid or a book or a movement or some type of signature, something that's greater than you that lives on. Mm -hmm. That's my answer. Thank you. I think of deathless as people will never stop saying your name. <laughs> but not in an egoic way. Um, in any such way, if you live on in infamy, then you are deathless. Or eternal. Mm -hmm. Very nice. The next question. Okay. What's the purpose of having a name? It is the seed of our persona. <laughs> the seed of our persona. Yes. And many people change their names to sappy sounding names. <gasps> like, like Vishnu Om when the real name is George. Um, so people can sometimes rename themselves. I guess it's a way to an identifier. Or hopefully your name has some meaning. Like there was a reason why your parents named you the name that they named you. Well, my name is Ori, which means or I, right? Yeah. Which means light. I love it. How about you guys? It means light? In what, yeah, what it means language? my light in Hebrew. My family is Israeli. Oh, yeah, you're Israeli. Okay. Well, Zachary, I sent you a whole thing about what your name means. It's quite splendid. Would you send it? I sent it to you on Twitter. Recently? No. Long time ago. No. <laughs> yeah, like two months ago. No. That's right, you did. It was no, it was like maybe two and a half weeks ago. No, I mean that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let you know so exactly. So we were first dating, right? No, it was our first argument. So, um, Zachary was the name of an angel and what what did you discover about I discovered that it's a Zachary I have a Zachary um, that Zachary is to be in the presence of a Zachary um, makes the other person feel like the most beautiful person this is what the what my findings were and that person has um, a lot of love, but I don't know that ain't. I don't know the. Do you know the? You sh should know what Zachary the angel is all about. Mm. It's just a label. Zachary the angel. Yeah. I mean, it's like. Well, it's just the name. Well, let's not get too fluffy here. You know, I mean, this is simulation. Talking to. You. <laughs> okay. All right. Too fluffy. I mean, let's be sensitive to our viewers. I mean, we're talking about some dance. Like sciency, businessy, entrepreneurshipy, and stuff. People. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Then mm -hmm. ask. Let's ask a question. And spiritual. That, that, um, How can we make that? sure they like us? You know. I don't think we can make sure. We we can just be authentic. If they don't like us, they can change the channel. Oh snap! <laughs> That's why it's gangster. 
cool. Um, okay, next question that's more businessy. y All right, I know who's really facilitating this. Um, <laughs> you said more businessy? No, I'm taking your, your cue. You said let's address the audience that is entrepreneurial and businessy. So yeah. we can, can definitely address such a topic. Dun, dun, dun. Are we in a simulation or is this the real reality? Yeah. I say simulation. I say simulation. Um, or whatever you want to call it, right? How about you? Simulation. With some little glitches here and there. Totally. Uh, I believe we're in the real world. Uh oh. Like channeling our viewers. <laughs> real world, okay. In this very moment. Because I'm real, okay? Zach is holding down the realness space. Yeah. He's representing and anchoring that. He's the real guru. You guys all think you're Sims or something. No, I think I'm in a sim, but I don't think I'm a sim. I, I was meaning like the game? Yeah. Like the, uh -oh. like a sim voice? Like blah, 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 blah. Um, I just have, I have other voices that's wonk wonk is not one of them. Okay. <laughs> British voice, a French voice, a Marge voice. Okay, then if we're in a simulation, um, <coughs> what's the real form of reality? Nature. Capital N. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just got confused there what the capital N was. Yeah, nature. Um, the real form of reality? Well, one time I was sleeping and uh, I've had some in, like really cool sleep experiences. Multiple which probably may, could answer different facets of that. But one, the first one that came to mind was I was sleeping and uh, I woke up in my sleep, but uh, not to this simulation. I woke up to myself falling. I was in uh, this like infinite blackness, blacker than black. It was like... It was like a, a quality, the closest thing would be black. But, uh, and uh, I didn't know, and it, it was very short, this awakening. And I only remembered it, it was in my sleep. I woke up and there was like this, let's say 15 seconds. And then I remembered it in the middle of the next day. But, oh, that nice. But, it's all black, black. And, uh, and I'm like falling, like I, I couldn't have my bearings. Like I, I didn't know how to be in this, in this. but it was so real and um, it was very clear. I was super lucid. It was like, oh, this is me. Like it didn't feel any different than this or any normal day. It was like, dude, I'm Ori, uh, except I'm not. Like, you know, like <laughs> I'm, I'm actually like just this like, just this like eyeballs in this like vastness of black this groundless like indescribable vastness and uh yeah that was uh so maybe that and then yeah and then maybe there are other facets that are more um bright and stuff anyway so since we've touched upon dreams what do you <laughs> <laughs> you're <Yes>. yawning <laughs> so do you have a, a reoccurring dream or a dream that stands out Zach yeah when I'm falling off of a cliff and then right before I hit the cliff I wake up is that a reoccurring dream yeah um, my reoccurring dream is 
I can see myself behind a driving and I'm remotely trying to control the car that's about to crash and I don't have control of the brakes and it's a reoccurring dream that's happened wow. over and over again where I'm trying to control the car and then wake up before it smashes into another car. I used to have also dreams where there used to be a gathering of us and there was a cliff and we used to just practice flying. Those were fucking fun. Flying in dreams. You ever have like a lucid dream where you can like control the dream? As of late, yes. I don't know if I'm controlling it. I'm just awake and I'm realizing that I'm also dreaming. I'm flying, I'm flying and I can control where I go. I wish I had more of those lucid. But that's a practice. Do you do that? Yeah, sometimes. Um, do you ever fall in love with someone in your dream that you've never met before? I've had um, dreams of someone else that I don't know, but I don't know them. So I guess yes. I've had a sleepgasm. Just waking up, having an orgasm. Are you guys enlightened? <laughs> we enlightened. Maybe on some things, not not all things. It's many layers. For enlightened, I don't think could be on this earth plane. I feel like I resonate with the um, with divine <laughs> energy, but am I itself a source of a, of enlightenment and illumination? Maybe. Yeah, right? Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Sure. Yeah, it sounds good. Are you? Um, which part of me? I feel like a vessel. I feel like a vessel, and I feel like my nature is very about enlight like it's very enlightenment e that's how i feel like you're a catalyst for others to reach enlightenment <sighs> yeah yeah that's beautiful yeah thank you i think it's important for us to shine our light Yes. And that's infectious. Illuminate the darkness. Yeah, illuminati the darkness. Illuminate the darkness. Be the first one on the dance floor. The first one on the dance floor? Yeah. Can I high five you guys? Yes. Okay. I'm often the first one on the dance floor. Oh. What was that joke? Dance like everyone's watching. No, it's not a joke, but dance like nobody's watching. I don't know the joke. But there was a joke we saw about... Oh, yeah, yeah, at the comedy store, but it was not about dancing. They made it something else that I don't remember. Okay. Do you I, remember? I remember that was really funny. <laughs> it was really funny that night. But I mean, it's going to be a cliffhanger because I don't know the punchline or, the, or anything that precedes it. No. Um... But yeah, dance like nobody's watching. Yeah, I'm going to go along with that. Yeah, because like, um, that's why I uh, closed my eyes on the dance floor. Me too, I closed my eyes. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then it, when I open up, I'm like, oh my God, people are watching me. And then I'm super embarrassed. Really? Yeah. But you're such a great dancer. <laughs> I didn't want you to close your eyes. I know. <laughs> it's okay. I'm owning my that I know I'm a good dancer too. Yeah. Let's wrap so we can get you guys home. Okay. okay. It's and, a wrap. Okay. All right. Well, Alan has spoken. It's great to be with uh, you guys tonight. Really, it was Thank fun. You. And um, thanks to all our viewers for tuning in. Um, and uh, as Alan would say, like, comment and stuff. 
<laughs> and uh, and um, we'll see you soon. Have a good one. Namaste. Uh -huh. Namaste. Over and out. Okay.